Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode six of the Agency Way, a Room 214 Weekly Blab series to help marketers learn from subject matter experts within a marketing agency, uh, in addition to guest thought leaders in business and marketing uh, worldwide. Uh, Room 214's Erica Stutzman is my co-host, signed, uh, signed on here as the Agency Way. I'm Jason Cormier, co-founder of Room 214, a digital and social media marketing agency. Uh, today's guest on the show is Jennifer Birak, uh, the Vice President of Marketing for Wrapped Media. Jennifer has a long time background in storytelling and visual content. She previously was the VP of Content Marketing um, and Marketing Communications at Getty Images in New York City, where she established its content marketing platform. Uh, I believe it's now called Stories and Trends. Mm -hmm. uh, she came to Wrapped, which is headquartered in Boulder, Colorado in 2014. Uh, and today we've asked her to talk about interactive video and the future of content. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Hi, guys. So happy to be here, even though I am nervous. I can't help it. <laughs> it's really easy. We'll make it easy on you. All right. <laughs> can you hear me, Jason? I can hear you just fine. Maybe he can't. <laughs> so classic. I can't hear anybody. <laughs> Was I talking and nobody could hear yeah. me? I, I heard your intro. Oh, can hear you can you. hear me. Yeah. Nod yes mm -hmm. if you can hear me. <laughs> but Jennifer barely can. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, hey, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna ask our first question. I'm gonna let uh, Erica pick it up if for whatever reason I can't hear you guys and respond in a meaningful way. Yeah. And uh, for Thank those you. of you watching, hey, this is just, this is Blab. This is a new platform and, you know, this kind of stuff happens. <laughs> so, um, so to get us started, uh, we're talking interactive video today and some are familiar uh, with what that actually is. Uh, so Jennifer, I would love if you could just tell our audience um, about Wrapped Media's platform, uh, specifically what you create and build for your clients. Sure. Sure. Well, if it's okay with you, because you said it was, Erica, I'm just going to like kind of relate it back to how I found rap media, you know, as, as a content marketer. So, uh, you know, as you said, Jason, I um, w was living in New York City. I worked for Getting Images for a long time, and I helped bring about the transformation there from really being focused on interruptive advertising and push marketing and, and brought them um, and transform them to really think about um, creating content for for pull first and for earn channels first. And uh, when I, my family and I, we decided to pick up and move to Boulder. We um, we moved here specifically because of the great stuff that was going on in the whole media tech corridor. Um, but I moved out here. We drove out here. I didn't have a job, but I immediately found rap media. My background is in film and video originally. And I was absolutely fascinated about the potential that it held for content marketers. And I couldn't believe that I didn't, I'd never heard of it. And so um, what is rap media? Rap media is basically an HTML5 video technology platform that enables content creators to uh, basically concept, create, build, and publish their interactive videos. And um, the big, I'd say, across the board uh, pain point of why our customers, who are big brands and media companies, come to us is that they are trying to drive deeper engagement um, with their customers. And interactive storytelling accomplishes just that. Um, it allows the viewer to become the participant and basically choose their own path, the, choose the content that they find most interesting to them. And I'd say in an age uh, where interruptive advertising is definitely being challenged right now, and social media is on this, you know, meteoric, you know, this incredible rise, um, we find that people are really in this exploration. They're in a lean-in mode. The irony is that they've never been more engaged. They're just not engaging with ads. Um, they're not, they're rejecting um, the pro promotional messages, um, anything that doesn't seem authentic or, um, you know, or valuable in some ways. 
Um, and so, again, our clients, um, which are ABC News, uh, 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 Ogilvy & Mather, big agencies, Ogilvy & Mather, um, uh, Samsung, Toyota, eBay, um, all of these guys are really uh, embracing interactive video as a way to uh, drive meaningful connections with their customers. Yeah. Could you um, hear any of that? Jason? I heard all of it. You sound great. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> can, can you hear me yeah. right now? Yeah, I can. Oh, All right. Good. All right. Erica, I know you had a question uh, yeah, I do. as well. So feel free to jump right in. <laughs> yeah, I would love also for anybody watching this who isn't familiar with RAPT's platform to go to raptmedia.com and just explore their interactive videos. Because unless you see it firsthand, you don't really get what they're talking about. And it's actually a really super cool technology. Um, so Jennifer, I wanted to ask you to tell the participants here about the future of content and what the future of content means to Wrapped, so sort of from the Wrapped perspective. Absolutely. So I think what we're seeing is, you know, the future of content for us are definitely for marketers that have already made that transformation, that shift from push to pull. Um, they're creating meaningful content brand experiences primarily or um, upfront for the earned, for earned channels, not necessarily for paid channels first. Um, however, uh, con even content marketers are still focused on measuring what we call, um, or measuring channel performance. And Rap Media is asking the question, uh, what if you were to measure the performance of the content itself, the content experience itself? You know, to us, that's the that embodies what the future of content is. You know, what if you were able to, um, you know, uh, not measure just uh, clicks, likes, shares, or views, which we really consider top of the funnel or vanity metrics, and you were able to not only look at time viewed, but look at, um, you know, average time viewed or average number of nodes, that's what we call the different content areas within an interactive video, the number of nodes clicked. Uh, what if you were able to measure the conversions um, within the video, either a CTA off to social sharing or a CTA off to get more content to learn more, or a CTA to go to a website and take a, you know, a desired behavior, you know, whatever, whatever that call to action is. And what if you were able to actually derive uh, insights from where your, uh, your participant, your viewer, which is really a participant, how they navigated, what content they navigated on, what did they care about? Um, not, you know, if you could measure all of that, then suddenly you're not just focused on the vanity metrics. You're able to actually optimize, iterate and optimize the content experience. Well, what does that do? It lengthens the shelf life of your content and it allows you to garner more value of it, garner more value from it. Then suddenly you can measure return on investment um, of, of, of your content, which is a real big challenge, I think, for content marketers today. They can justify the, you know, the investment in the channel, but they're really having a tough time being able to justify the investment in what we consider to be the most important thing, the content experience itself. And so to us, um, that uh, it, it's the emerging content marketing technologies out there that are focused not on distribution or even management, um, but focused on content creation and the technology platform is what enables the measurement. And to us, tech that powers content creation and data, that is the future of content. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And, and uh, I, I know in my own experience, the first time I experienced an interactive video, you know, I'm watching the video, um, all of a sudden I'm asked a question and then it pauses and I'm, and I'm waiting and I'm thinking to myself, oh, wow, this, this question is actually being asked of me in this video, and now I have to respond. And I see that I can move my mouse and click on something uh, to make a choice. Uh, and, and then, of course, you know, I, I do it, and, and then a, a video appears based on 
how I engage with the content. So all, all that to say, you know, that that's really the first time you experience that. You're just like, oh my gosh, this is eye-opening uh, in terms of what the opportunities could be. Um, with that in mind, I would love to just talk a little bit about this idea of personalization uh, when it comes to engagement uh, with videos. It's such a huge trend right now. Maybe you can share a little bit about how Wrapped leverages personalization. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wrapped defines personalization as choice, um, choice that creates interactivity within uh, the content experience that enables the viewer, in this case, the participant, to personalize their own experience. It's not an algorithm. It's not a machine, you know, tracking your behaviors and then serving up an ad that they think you want to see. It is giving that power to the actual consumer to make those choices and personalize their experiences for themselves. And the result of that is just, it's just a more authentic experience. Um, I mean, that's, that's how we leverage it. That's how we define it. Do you believe there's like a, a better way to achieve personalization uh, in this area of you know, pull content marketing? I mean, that's what we've been talking about, right? You know, poll marketing is the era of people being in a, a discovery or exploration, the, you know, a mode, a lean in mode. Um, interactivity equals personalization. But again, it's that personalization that is, you know, given to the consumer. They're empowered, you know, to personalize their experience through, through choice. Right. And I think you know, if interruptive advertising uh, or disruptive advertising, whatever you want to call it, is, is on the wane, why do you think marketers are focusing on technological investments that speak to, to push, really? Well, I think, it, you know, there's a huge part of the market that is just uh, that is their primary focus. Uh, they haven't made that transformation over to pull uh, their their first and foremost goal you know, is to create uh, campaigns and advertising campaigns where they can drive more clicks and views and they can, you know, achieve the reach that they're looking for. Again, what we talk about with vanity. And because they are um, seeing reducing returns on investments and reduced engagement, you know, their focus is on technologies that are going to solve that problem. If you haven't shifted your mindset yet, you know, that makes sense. Now, I, I want to say, though, you know, um, you know, the bottom line is that better targeting and personalization as it relates to ad tech, you know, does work. It's not like it doesn't work. Right. Um, and it's not that I don't believe in it. I do believe that paid you know, advertising the technologies that are there that will continue to evolve are an important part of the mix, but they're not the most important part of the mix. And I think that's the shift that's got to go on where you need marketers need to shift to say, where is the true value connection with my customer? It's in the content or the, the brand experience. Let me focus on creating that for earned channels and then let me apply paid channels. And suddenly that, sh that slight shift in focus is going to change where people allocate their resources and what new technologies that they're willing to discover um, and prioritize. And so I think, you know, this is just another example of a big change in the whole shifting ecosystem, you know, in, in this entire marketing space today. So do you mind if we go a little, we've been talking about the user experience quite a bit and the um, the impact that the content can have on the users. Can we take it back a little bit to that those data points? Because I know that you, that's, that's part of the point, right? You want to track the behavior and, and maybe learn some data from the users themselves. What sort of things are you learning from your, can your clients glean from these um, data points? Well, I'll give you um, a great example. And in this case, it's uh, in, it's an internal marketing um, example. So, so we work with, you know, um, any kind of content creator that's trying to market to any kind of audience. And in this particular instance, um, we had a, a global enterprise customer who had 350,000 employees. 
And they had the challenge of um, basically rolling out in a very, very short period of time, um, new um, employee benefits programs. And they needed to not only educate them quickly on the complexity of these of these plans, but they needed to get them to quickly take desired behavior or action of enrolling in a certain period, uh, time period. Um, uh, and engagement was really hard for them and getting them to do the right thing in the time period, you know, you know, previous experiences. And they had set up a one, you know, with 350,000 employees, they set up a 1-800 number um, that allowed employees that were confused, they didn't know what to do to call in. And so there was huge expense involved as well. So they implemented what they called with our platform an interactive guided experience that basically brought that whole uh, uh, you know, in all of all of their employees um, through the plan. It, it, you know, the fact that it worked on mobile, and that's a, a really important point uh, to bring up here, is that most interactive um, experiences are not yet working um, across all mobile devices, including iPhone. And Wrapped is in a unique position, and I think why we're working with so many big agencies and brands is that we have a patent and have solved, you know, how to create that seamless experience across all devices, including, including iPhone. Um, but going back, um, they created this interactive experience, um, guided experience, and they were able to um, garner over 270 70,000 views. They were hoping for like 150,000 and um, based on just previous engagement uh, metrics. Uh, their average view time for each session was seven minutes. They were hoping between three to four. And they um, interacted 17 times on different pieces of content, which showed a huge engagement rate because there was, I believe, 18 basically nodes or, or buckets of content. So, um, you know, there was a lot of discovery going on uh, within the experience. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, you know that, that was considered a real huge success for them. Yeah, it sounds like you get some real ROI out of that too. Didn't you find a real yeah, thing I, there? And that's, that's the most compelling thing, right? <clears throat> uh, they were not only able to, one, reduce the amount of time that the HR department was actually spending on this rollout, um, they were able to reduce the time in which they got their employees to take the desired action. But most interesting is that they were able to reduce the calls into the call-in center by 1%, which seems like nothing, but for the size of company that they were, it saved them tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Now that is that is an extreme example, but I think you know it and it's, it's a great one to share. That's very cool. So, Jason, you want to you want to maybe ask about the the yeah uh, and um, yeah I'm I'm actually so what I'm going to do is because uh, here's the thing I. I love this conversation and, and I actually want to, there are some other things that I know we want to touch on today um, with you. Um, since we're hitting up against our 20 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, but uh, let's keep the conversation going. And for those uh, that want to continue to watch, that's great. I mean, I think, I think what we're winding down to here is that the future of content is really about uh, being engaging. It's about letting your users choose their content uh, and then, having a deep insight into uh, your users. Um, I, I guess as just a final question here before we go into our segue, Jennifer, maybe you can talk a little bit more about Wrapped Media's place in the future and where do you see your clients, uh, or, or rather, where do your clients see the potential? Maybe you, know, what, you can talk a little bit about what's on the horizon from your perspective. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think we're pretty bold in that you know, we see a future where the majority of all digital content is going to be interactive, um, just like the web itself. It's the next layer of the web, so to speak. And, you know, Rap Media is really all about giving not only content, but marketers and consumers or the end, you know, the end user, um, what we call the interactive advantage. Um, it's really about, you know, delivering incredible, 
meaningful, valuable content experience, which only can be achieved by giving the um, the end user a say, you know, so. Yeah, truly engaging them uh, versus pushing something out and just tracking what they'll do at that point. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Well, Jennifer, I just want to, again, thank you for joining us. It's been great uh, having you on the agency way. Again, for those interested in learning more about Rap Media, definitely check out rapmedia.com. Uh, there's plenty of great use cases on that site as well. Erica, I'd love for you to close us out today uh, with the final three. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, the book recommendation for the week is I am reading Hunger Makes Me a Modern Girl by Carrie Brownstein. You, you'd say I'm a big library fan. Um, I was so that. I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people know her from um, being a, one of the Riot Girls, the original Riot Girls from Slater Kinney. Um, she's also on Portlandia. And I think sometimes just getting out of our, our business wheelhouse and, and looking to real creative voices um, can be a real beneficial thing. My nonprofit shout out for the week is a um, foundation that's near and dear to my heart, the Community Foundation serving Boulder County. Uh, for those of you watching who don't live in Boulder County, um, you might wanna look around because there are 1400 community foundations across the world really. Um, and it's really about giving where you live. You give to the foundations and they improve the quality of life in the communities that you actually live and work in. And then in honor of this week's Super Bowl, I wanted to find a quote that would be sort of sporty. So I picked Vince Lombardi, who the Super Bowl trophy is named after. And he said, a quitter never wins and a winner never quits. Go Broncos. Go Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, everybody, for joining us today. As a reminder, you can follow us on Twitter at room underscore 214. Uh, you can also subscribe to our email newsletter by going to room214.com slash blog. Our weekly series continues every Thursday at 1130 a.m. Mountain. On behalf of everyone at Room 214, thank you for joining us on another episode of The Agency Way. Thanks, Jennifer.